Hi, I'm Mike. Today we take a look at what it takes to bribe a cow to like you. And in true ranch fashion, we take a simple job and make it a little bit more complicated and take twice as long. It's coming up today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> I'm out here checking on cows because believe it or not, we are only, uh, who knows how long we are away from calving. I've been, it, been known to have cows uh, a month away from the beginning of calving. And really at this point where we're only just a couple weeks away from the beginning of calving, maybe three weeks, uh, I expect that we'll probably have a calf on the ground any day now. But what does that mean for us, the ranch, and the cows. Well, it means that we've got to start getting ready for that calving season and no better time than the present to start doing that. And one of the first steps we're going to take uh, is not getting our calving kit ready. It's not uh, get putting together medications and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to actually work on getting to know these cows a little bit better. We want them to get used to us being around them again, uh, that they're used to us being out here with them just like we are today, and being up close and personal so that when they do have calves, we're able to move in, check on that calf, get it tagged, and move out without uh, causing any stress. Well, that's the hope anyway. That all starts with coming out in the gator uh, as often as possible and just kind of giving them a, a, a look over, a, a once around. We try to get our eyes on every single cow out here and, and just make sure she's doing okay, that uh, she doesn't have any issues, there's nothing hanging out, there's no feet, there's no uh, any discharge or anything like that that we have to worry about. So really, all we have to do is just kind of cruise around the cows and make sure that everybody's okay. seems super easy, especially when you have cows that are pretty laid back like these ones are, but let a cow have a calf and, and get a little angry at you and, and the whole uh, dynamic can change. And that's where we start looking for any advantage that we can uh, when it comes to dealing with some of those cows. And one of the biggest uh, secret weapons that we have in our toolbox is a little thing called cake. This is cake. This is what makes cows love me. And you can, it goes by a bunch of different names. Uh, some people call it cake, some people call them range cubes, which I don't understand because they're, they're not a cube. Uh, I've also heard them called cow cookies. They look nothing like a cookie, but then again, they don't look anything like cake either. Uh, how they're made is actually uh, where they get their name and it usually comes from when they squeeze like cottonseed oil or anything else out of any type of seed uh, and they're getting that oil out with, what they're left over with is called cake. Now that cake is what they then take and compress into this for us to give to the cows. Basically what it is, is it's another type of protein supplement, much like the lick barrels that I showed you last week. Uh, this is just a different way to do it. But like I said, it makes the cows love me. And this time of year, that's super important. Uh, when we're out there working with their calves, when we're working with the cows, let's say we have a cow that we have to bring in, she's cranky, she's you know uncomfortable, we have to deal with her. Uh, any advantage that we can get uh, will definitely uh, be in our favor. So being able to get the cake out to the cows though is kind of the trick. We've done it a bunch of different ways. Uh, we've done it by hand with bagged feed or bagged cake. Uh, we've also filled up the back of the gator with it. And uh, we actually have a cake feeder, which we mounted to a trailer and then took it out to the cows that way. But today it's time for just a little bit of a change.
So this is the part of the, uh, the program here where I'm just gonna tick a whole bunch of people off because I'm gonna basically undo a few of the things that we spent the last year, maybe two years, implementing. And one of them is the cake trailer. I built the cake trailer uh, in order to have some place to, to put the cake onto and, and be able to take it out to the cows. The problem is that it is just a little bit of a pain in the butt. You have to uh, hook it up, you have to disconnect it, you have to make sure the battery is charged. All those things cause extra work. So we're gonna eliminate that extra work uh, by taking the cake feeder and mounting it directly to the bed of the gator. fits, oh, there's a problem. See that? So we're not sitting high enough. Crap. These will probably work. I don't wanna go too high because once we get this thing up, filled up, obviously we don't wanna be top heavy, so. I think if we can put, just use this, this is what, an inch and a half? So if we can get that up, just that extra inch and a half, that might be enough to do it. Oh yeah, we got plenty. That's plenty of room to mess with there, okay. The wiring for this thing is super simple. Um, we have battery leads here. I can take off the, uh, um, this is actually for a trickle charger. I can take that off. So we got battery leads there. And then we've got another couple wires that go to the switch. So that's pretty much it, super simple and easy to do. But. We're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit different with the switch. I'll show you that in a second. Really quick, let me tell you about this thing. This is a stall feeder um, from Harris in Arkansas. The guy's name is Randy that builds these. Check them out. I'm gonna put a link down in the description because I have used stall feeders uh, for years. Uh, they work great. Randy builds, uh, builds them, does a great job building them. So um, take a look at them. Uh, stall feeders, Randy Stoll down in Harris in Arkansas, great guy. And uh, we'll be happy to hook you up with uh, uh, a variety of different sizes too. He even makes one that goes on a four wheeler. So, and you don't have to put just cake through them. Remember, you can put grain, you can put whatever you're feeding uh, through these things. In fact, we're probably gonna end up using this one when we start graining uh, massive amounts of steers all at the same time. Makes sense to be able to do this. So, all right. Anyway, wiring, let's start there. Welcome to the inside of the gator. Um, <laughs> as calving season goes on, we're gonna spend a lot of time inside the gator, trust me. Okay, and we're gonna be using a little clamp-on terminal connector here. It should work really good for this, actually. Ah, crap. Where did it go? You know I had one of those grabber things. Lincoln loves to play with it, so I have no idea where it's at, so I'm gonna try to grab it with a magnet here, maybe. Get this magnet down in there. Without it sticking to everything. Look at that, got it. This, by the way, selfie stick. Okay, so that's the positive side's hooked up. 
Okay, so everything's connected. And so that means it's got power. Hopefully, uh, but there's only one way to really know. And that's to try to turn it on. Hey, it works. These two wires are our, our actual switch. Um, I had them wired up to a button inside the gator, but. All right, so that works. We're gonna now change game plans here just a little bit. Let me show you. Fimco Industries wireless remote control controls all 12 volt products up to 20 amps. So I'm hoping this will work. Um, super simple to install, let me show you. All there is is just two parts, super simple. Power in, power out, and then you have your remote control on and off. That's all there is to it. Uh, we just gotta do a little bit of rewiring. This should be, should be relatively simple. Yeah, that one's it. It's hot. Okay, I'm gonna call it. I don't think this box, it doesn't work. I don't know if I got a faulty one or what happened, but I even took it apart. It don't work. But, however, this part still works, right? So all I have to do is take this cord, now that I got a mess, this, this one, run it inside onto a switch, and then I can control it from inside the gator. What I was really hoping was that this remote control would work, and I might try to find a different one that might work. But um, if I can get the remote control to work, then I could put out cake while I was standing away from the gator, kind of drawing a mom cow over towards that cake uh, so that I could tag her calf. Still a thought, but I guess uh, we're gonna go back to doing this the old fashioned way. Okay, I found a little push button type switch that should work just fine until I figure out what I'm gonna do for switches. I really wish that remote control thing would work, but if anybody else has used any type of remote control switches, or if anybody happens to be an electrician and can tell me what I'm doing wrong, then uh, that might be an option too, but. All right, switch is wired up. Before I put some tape on it, we'll see if it works. Works just fine. We'll tape it up. And that'll be my remote for right now. A little anticlimactic, if you ask me, but whatever. I'm running out of time here because I got to go get Lincoln from school before too long. All right, next thing. So we got rid of the cake trailer, which is something that we spent a ton of time building. Oh, the other thing I just realized is I lose my, my lights. Well, that kind of sucks. See? Oh, well. Okay, uh, so <laughs> I could flip those up and put them on top or something, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, so we lost our cake trailer. Now we've incorporated the cake feeder into the back of the gator. The, la the other thing we're gonna lose um, that's gonna take some people off is uh, our cake stand. We've been feeding from bagged cake for uh, a few months now and obviously saving money on the ranch and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and we built the cake, state, the, the cake stand, which is actually right here. I waited until it was empty before I started this project, but it had a bag of cake in it. I'll show a little bit of what it looks like. And then we had the, uh, the valve on the bottom of it. We're changing gears here a little bit because the uh, the feeder won't fit underneath here. We didn't build it tall enough, but that's okay. We're still gonna use this. Um, I'm actually, I think I'm gonna shorten it just a little bit and uh, probably get two of them out of this one and then build 
um, or then use it for chicken feed, um, hog feed, COB, whatever we may put into it. Uh, we'll be able to get underneath it with a bucket and then fill it up that way. I think it'll be a lot, uh, it'll still have some use and it'll, it'll be a lot easier. So this thing will still be used. We're gonna modify it uh, over the next, uh, I don't know, whatever, a few weeks. All right, now we're gonna head out and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna feed this cake or how we're gonna get cake into the, uh, into the new cake feeder or the old cake feeder. The cake feeder on the gator, how's that sound? All right, let's do it. So that's our valve. Helps if it's closed. Okay, now we bring the gator in. So cake feeder slides open like so. There's the interior. All we should have to do open up our valve here. We just shut it off when it's full. Close it back up, and there we go. All right, we're gonna get the tractor out of the way. Then we got one more thing to do before we can go out and feed the cows, and that's measure how fast cake comes out of the feeder, because that's actually pretty important, because we wanna know how much cake we're giving the cows. So we're gonna head back to the shop and do that really quick. Okay, now in the shop with the help of Home Depot, we are gonna figure out exactly what our flow rate is here and then um, basically uh, how many pounds we're giving the cows at any given time. The general rule of thumb is that you want two pounds of cake per cow uh, per day is probably the max. Cows can actually overdose on cake. Uh, they don't really overdose, but they'll bloat and all kinds of bad things can happen. So we wanna make sure that we're not giving them too much. Uh, we know that we have 600 pounds of cake in here. Um, we wanna know how long we have to hold down that button. Uh, so we're gonna first hold it down. We're gonna, I'm gonna count and see how long it takes to fill up this bucket. Then we'll weigh the bucket and figure out what we're doing. So I'm gonna guess 10 seconds to fill up that bucket. We've got our oldie timey doctor scale. There's a, something here to zero it out somehow. I don't remember, there it is. Okay, so the bucket, roughly, cause I forgot to weigh the bucket. So 25, oh, 25 pounds. 25 pounds of cake puts out in, put out in 10 seconds. Uh, basically we have to put out two pounds per animal. So that's a hundred pounds in, uh, 40 seconds, so we need 200 pounds, so we're gonna need to go for 80 seconds on the button uh, to be able to put out enough cake for 100, roughly 100 cows out there and, uh, and make them all happy. That shouldn't be any problem, right? Let's go do it. As I back out of the shop here, I am beginning to remember all the reasons I don't like having the cake feeder on the back of the gator. First of all, you can't see anything when you're backing up, nothing. I mean, I guess if I had mirrors, that might be a, a good thing to get some mirrors. Uh, but so <laughs> anyway, that's one little thing. Uh, 
like I said, we lost our uh, our lights on the back. That's not a horrible thing, I guess. I mean, in the whole grand scheme of things, it's not horrible. Okay, time to get a gate. There's absolutely no way I am driving over the ramp with 600 pounds of cake on the back. It is a little top heavy, you can feel it. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't like the trailer. The trailer's a pain in the ass. Uh, having it on the, the gator is equally a pain in the butt, but it's one of those things, it's, it's cake. You gotta do it, you gotta, well I do anyway. Uh, not everybody has to cake. You could put out lick barrels, that's a source of protein. Uh, but like I said earlier, you know, at the very beginning was the fact that I I use cake as a bonding agent between me and my cows. It's a weird, it's a weird thing, but it makes the cows happy, makes me happy, and we can all live in harmony and hang out and sing kumbaya at the end of the day. I guess once we get out here to the field. All we have to do is, here comes Bambi. Hey Bambi, how's it going? Hey, do you want some cake? I brought this cake machine thing. Remember that? Huh? She's like, yeah, I want some cake. Oh, I know, oh wow, uh, careful, careful, careful. Go bonk. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, obviously, we're able to get a little bit closer with our cows. This cow right here, big fat round cow, um, she's a little cranky sometimes, but as long as there's cake involved, see? Just a little bit, makes your life just a little bit easier. Okay, so cows are helping themselves to cake. We are now gonna put out some cake. Um, what do we say? 10 seconds feeds 13 cows. So I've got my handy dandy little button here. I also shut it off every once in a while just to make sure that it's not gonna burn up or overheat or something. All right, so that's 80 seconds. Uh, let's see how much we've got left in here. Not that I'll be able to eyeball it or anything, but I guess if it's empty, we put out too much. Oh yeah, we put out way too much because it's almost empty. Honestly though, does this thing really hold 600 pounds? That's another thing we gotta test. So, all right, more testing is, is needed, but the fact of the matter is that we've got happy cows. They have cake, which makes them extremely happy. That's it. We're empty. No more cake. Close that up because you don't want to go through a gate with that thing down. Don't ask me how I know that. And we jump back in. Okay. <laughs> ah, today has been full of interesting moments. Uh, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to town at some point, not today, probably, because I already, actually already missed picking up Lincoln. Aaron put me in charge of the farm store and I'm out here in the field uh, when I'm supposed to be watching the farm store. But it's, it's just closed for a minute while we take care of this. So what I'm gonna have to do is go to town, get 200 pounds of cake in a bag, in bags. Or I need to weigh out 200 pounds of cake and load it into this thing with buckets or whatever. I think bags might be a little bit easier. Okay, so I get 200 pounds, put it in here, count it, see how long it takes to get out. I mean, that's, 
that's the best I'm going to be able to do for right now anyway. The other thought that I have is to put some sort of window in the in the cake feeder so you can see uh, how much cake comes out and how fast it comes out. That's another thought. Um, at the very least, I can mark in the inside, you know, where the level is for 200 pounds, where the level is for 400 pounds. All right, well, my camera died out there. That happens. Uh, that's our plan, we're moving forward. We've got the gator and the cake and the cake feeder and everything put together and calving will be here literally before we know it, along with the 30 and 30, which is coming up. And just to make sure that you stay on top of things, head on over to our website, sign up for our newsletter. It's, uh, it comes out once a week, it gives you all the behind the scenes here on the ranch, what's going on, uh, additional footage, just it's a really good thing to have uh, in your back pocket, just to make sure that you don't miss a thing. Head to the website, rwyominglife.com, sign up for the newsletter there. Thank you very much for hanging out with me today. I do feel like I got something done, even though it did take me a little bit longer than I thought it was going to, and it turned into a bit of a more of an ordeal than I thought it was going to, and really we had to fix a few things all along the way and, and figure out a different way to do things, and it's just another day on the ranch. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on our Wyoming Life. Wyoming Life.